What to expect in today's video? In today's video, we are going to focus on the mapping of season 137 distribution in Europe with a significant emphasis on the period following the Chernobyl disaster and the presence of season 137 in mushrooms. This will be more of a story than an experiment. April 26, 1986, reactor block 4 of Chernobyl's nuclear power plant, an explosive release propels the 1000 ton reactor core lit skywards. Burning graphite rods ignite and the fire explosive releases parts of the spent nuclear reactor material, including its fission products like iodine 131, strontium 90 and notably season 137. This highly volatile season 137 disperses driven by the weather over the next weeks and months across Europe. While many short-lived radionuclides were also released, they have mostly decayed by now. Approximately 85 million gigabacterials of season 137 were released at the time of the accident. With a half-life of about 30 years, around 38 million gigabacterials should still be dispersed over Europe today. Creating such maps is extremely complex. I will try my best to explain how the data for this shown map was obtained. Here are some initial examples on how datasets can be represented in the form of a map. On the left side, the actual measurement points are listed. The selection of measurement points is often random and it could be near a weather station or a particular type of sediment or an already established research area. From these points, Voronoi polygons can be created. That the color corresponds to the measured value is fairly intuitive. The boundaries are drawn in such a way that the point is exactly at the middle of the polygon. The smaller the polygons, the more measurement points are in this area and the more reliable these values for that polygon are, provided that the data for these measurement points were properly collected. Such polygons are not the ultimate solution, but they are quite easy as to show high density of measurement points. Various methods are used for these measurements. Airborne gamma spectrometry conducted at an altitude of 25 to 100 meters and a speed of 100 to 300 kilometers an hour. Ground-based gamma spectrometry, no distance from the ground is specified. The spectrometer can hang from the open car truck and involve soil samples. And here's a list describing the measurement point density. All measurement values are corrected for the radioactive decay and normalized to May 10th, 1986. Various methods are used. SAL, soil sample analyzed by gamma spectrometry in a lab. AGS, airborne gamma spectrometry. FGS, field gamma spectrometry. And MGS, mobile gamma spectrometry. This great animation of the season 137 distribution from a French site is of course linked in the video description. This is likely a simulation based on measurement values over Chernobyl. Southern Germany was particularly contaminated with radiocesium from Chernobyl, with peak values over 100 kilobacterials per square meters measured at that time. We also explored collecting mushrooms to detect season 137. This idea isn't new, but it generates more interesting and numerous measurement points than soil samples would. There are more mushroom collectors than soil sample collectors, and potentially ingested radiocesium can impact health more directly than soil ingestion, because who eats soil? Right. Season 137, after raining down, first hits the tree, gets incorporated into the leaves and eventually reaches the soil. The mycelium of the mushroom, a network of thread-like cells, can absorb this radiocesium. There is a theory that agricultural soil is less contaminated than forest soil because it gets rolled over more often. Different mushroom types absorb nutrients differently. There are the saprophytes, derive the nutrients from dead organic matter, the parasites, they require a living host, and the symbionts, they live in symbiosis with another plant partner. Season 137 enters through pulvinic acids. These compounds are often orange or yellow and are visible in the bayboulite, for example, which accumulates the highest amount of radiocesium. The color, however, is not a good indicator of the radioactivity. In the bayboulite, derivatives like badion A and norbadion A form potassium complexes similar to cesium. The chemical similarity between the non-radioactive cesium-133 and the radioactive cesium-137 complicates this. Paul Code et al. provides detailed insights into cesium, sodium and potassium complexation, showing how norbadion A can exist in various forms depending on the pH. They conclude that the stability of cesium NBA complex is insufficient to explain the high cesium 137 accumulation in mushrooms, indicating that there is much more to be discovered. 
Coming to practical implications. There are many local initiatives in southern Germany mapping season 137. For instance, the Munich Environmental Institute offers an interactive map where collected mushroom samples are recorded. You can download the data or contribute by submitting your samples. I'm going to show you our practical course experiment addressing that in the future. Some mushrooms can exceed 1000 becquerels per kilogram of fresh weight. For example, the hedgehog mushroom, the red brown hedgehog mushroom, various species of waxy caps, the olive oysterling, the yellow stock chanterelle, common redfoot bullet, bay bullet, blackening milk cap, the ochre brittlegill, silky knight, violet funnel, and the goat liver. I certainly botched all of these names. Consuming 80 kilo of season 137 from food results in a 1 millisievert radiation dose for an adult. Even eating 200 grams daily of the most contaminated mushrooms, the babolite, with 2100 becquerel per kilogram fresh weight results in only 0.27 millisieverts a year. Smoking 20 cigarettes a day gives you 0.22 millisieverts a year. But mushrooms exceeding 600 becquerels per kilogram of fresh weight are not allowed for sale in Germany. So summary, season 137 remains detectable from Chernobyl disaster. Mapping these radionuclides requires coordination among regional, national and European institutions. But even hobby mushroom collectors can contribute as wild mushroom contains season 137. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.